Welcome to our short series of how to build a LiveScore website using LiveScore API. In this first video, we're just going to set up our developer machine and have our very own first page con containing only LiveScores. In the following videos, we're going to go through all of our features that you can find in our documentation, going through fixtures, match events, past matches or history data, head-to-head -head team comparison, getting league standings. Before we can start developing our website, we need to make sure that we have some things set up so we can just do it. The first thing we need is an account at LiveScoreAPI.com, which we already have here, and then we need an API key, an API secret, which we will change for every single video. And you can get yours from your profile. On the right, top right corner, you can go to your profile and then you will find your API key and API secret. You need both of them to access our data. Afterwards, we need a text editor where we can edit our source code. In our case, we are going to use NetBeans. And finally, we need a web server and in our case we're using MAM, but with the same success you can use LAMP, XAMP or WAMP. Once we have installed everything we need, we can start preparing our machine to simulate a web server as much as possible. To do that, we need to create a virtual host and then point that virtual host to our machine and then from our machine to our web server, which in our case is MAMP. Let's go ahead and do that now. To do this we need to edit our hosts file and the location of the hosts file will depend on your operating system. So for Linux and Windows and Mac it will be a different place. But the good thing is that the content that we need to type in is always the same. So the first thing we need to provide is an IP address and it's always 127.0.0.1 and this will tell our operating system every time when we make a request to a certain domain name it will look at this IP and this IP is our local host or our computer so the next thing we need to do is we need to come up with a domain name that we can use for development purposes only so in this case we just chose ls, which is short for live score, and .local. And the .local extension will help us remember that this is only on our machine. So the last thing we need to do is we need to make these changes permanent. Now our host file has been changed. We need to also point that domain name to our web server, which in our case is MAMP. But this can be achieved with any other web server. To do that, we need to edit the virtual hosts file, which again, its location will depend not only on the operating system, but also on the software you chose for your web server. Once again, we just need to always type the same thing. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make a, a new virtual host point to port 80, which is always the default port that web browsers use. Then we need to provide the folder where the website is going to be located on our machine. And it's not required, but for easiness, we use the same folder name, ls.local, as the domain name to make it easier to locate our files. And we need to provide the server name, which is ls.local, the same as in our host file. So once we, we have made this already permanent, so it's already saved, we need to restart our web server to make these changes uh, available because the web server caches the virtual host file so it won't be able to find the domain name that we just created. Then we start it again. This could be done also through the console or terminal or any other graphical interface. And now we are ready to check our website. So to do that we write HTTP and then ls.local it's very important to write HTTP because otherwise you will just trigger a Google search 
and then once we hit enter we we'll get this internal server error and that's completely normal it's because we don't have the folder that we provided as the location of the website so to do that we need to create a folder that we named ls.local and now if we refresh it shows the contents of the folder since there is nothing inside there is no there is no content so with everything set up let's go and see how easy it is to create a live score website using our api and uh, we have already set up a a project in our NetBeans editor with where we're going to put our files so the first thing we do is we we create an empty file that we're going to name config.ini and this file we're going to put our key and our secret from our profile and the purpose of this is to abstract the credentials from the code so in case we need to change them, we just change them in one place and then they get changed in throughout, throughout our project. Now all of this code will be in GitHub, so you can just download it and change it and create your own project from it. Now that we have the configuration settings set up in this ini file, and it could be anything else like a JSON file, composer file, any configuration file that's not code works perfectly fine. So we now create a config.php, which is going to provide other configurations. And on top of that, it is going to parse our ini file located at config.ini. Now this ini array is going to contain all the information from here, which this will be the index and then this will be the value and we can easily see that if we just fire them the new file the new, the new variable and this one we save now if we open config php we can see that the key is this and then the value of the secret is this the next step would be to put these into constants so nobody can change them is maybe we're developing as a part of a team so maybe somebody uses the ini variable for something else find the key and then we also define the secret now we need an index file because this is the first file that the web server opens when we open a any domain. So we just create this index file. And inside this index file, we include our config file. So we have access to our constants that we just created. And with that, we can check and fire down the key. And the secret constants. Now we remove the config PHP because we now have an index file, so we will no longer see the contents of the folder, but we will rather see what we just far dumped separately. And there it is. So this is our API key, and this is our API secret. Now that we are set up and everything is abstracted, we can start getting our data. So going again to our live score api documentation we go to the page getting live scores where we can get all the information we need with all the peculiarities but the important information that we need is actually this url which we can copy just clicking the icon and if you're logged in then this demo key and demo secret will actually be replaced with your own API key in secret. Now we can come here and create a new URL, which will be pretty much this, and then we replace the T with our constant, 
from the secret with our secret constant and now this is the URL that is going to give us all the live scores and to do that we want to put it into a JSON response because we're going to use the JSON extension and then we do file get contents and then the URL we provide there now one thing is that this is we're using PHP as an example but you can use any other programming language and then in our documentation in the end of every page there are examples of how to use in this case with Python or just with curl and there is also examples of tutoring by country, by league, by competition and we are going to go into filtering, filtering of results in the, in the following videos so going back here let's see if we actually have gotten something so we just fire dump the result from the operation and then we refresh and see what happens and now we have our data so we can see that we have a success it's true and then we have the data inside but this is a string and doesn't really work for us so to do a bit differently we take this and put it using JSON decode function we make it an array so it's easier to work with it and now if we go far down and we use data then we use the data inside so it's just a, it's just a coincidence of data and data if we refresh one more time now it's an array one cool thing about HTML is that we can actually preformat this if we use the pre tag here which is going to make this whole array appear as a nice way to see and now we can see that it looks not much better and we can also see that we have this match which is an array of all the matches currently being played so what we could do now is we could make this look a bit better and put it into a table so let's say we have this is the end of our file and then we have our HTML code and in the head you can put all of your search engine optimization but in the body we're going to put this table And inside this table, we're going to have a row for each match. And inside each row, we're going to put the home site. And then the score. And then the away site. And to do that, we need to write a for each loop, which we're going to loop over all the data, which is inside data and then inside match. And we make this as a match, just for easiness. We use this underscore so we can easily track the variable that is inside the loop. It's not a requirement but it makes things easier so now we can copy all of this to have the same structure and order our code a bit and now we can print the home team name and then the away name and finally we'll print the current score so now when we refresh we get this in the form of the table so now it looks it looks much better and we can easily see the matches one thing that every live sport website needs is actually the live timing of the match and we can just add a new field here called time and we'll just print the time here 
and once again now we have also the time we have this one is finished and this one is finished and this one is finished this one has finished after extra time and these one are in progress and this one is in added time in the second half and this is how easy it is to build a live score website page using our live score api in the next video we're going to add some design and start filtering the data and adding making our website much better and more interesting for the users